Faber, who's the author of The Girl Code. Um, if you've watched my business book review, you'll know this is a book that I really like and that I made, I gave to Caroline. Caroline <laughs> enjoyed it. I loved it. <laughs> um, so, Caroline, to get things started, do you want to tell the guys a little bit about your background? I mean, how, how did you get into writing this book? Yeah, so I am an entrepreneur, and I actually I'll go back a little bit. I started um, with a blog when I was working full time for MTV. I was in a corporate position. I was in digital advertising, and it was just not what my dream was. I always wanted a creative career, and I always wanted to be a writer. I took the job at MTV just to kind of get my feet wet and thinking like I could sort of move up within the company and leave that that you know specific job that I was in. And I quickly learned that the money in writing wasn't there, at least in an editorial position at a corporate company. And I was just so engrossed with my job and the day to day was so stressful. And it was just, it was sort of like sucking all the creativity out of me that I didn't even have time to think about writing. So I was at MTV and I'm working and I sort of had this like revelation, this whole kind of life experience that was inspired by a glass of champagne, my blog, The Champagne Diet. And I said, I really need to start kind of documenting what I'm going through. I was, you know, in my 20s, and I think like a lot of women can relate, finding yourself in a position where you just really didn't intend to be. I was in a relationship that wasn't healthy for me. I was in a job that wasn't healthy for me. I wasn't working out. I wasn't eating well. So my blog, The Champagne Diet, became an outlet. And I loved really connecting with the women that were finding me. You know, this is before Instagram and Pinterest. It was like Facebook and Twitter. This was 2008-ish. And I would just tweet links to the blog and I would just kind of send it out there into, you know, the internet and people would respond. And with Twitter, it was amazing because it was people from all around the world. And I would get messages from women in like in the UK or in Sweden or, or you know, anywhere. And they would just say, oh, I really love that, that piece that you wrote. And I was finding this connection with these women just by sharing my story and sharing myself was so powerful. And it was so much more powerful than my day job. And I was finding that I was really drawn to the blog. And as years went on, I did it for a few years and I thought, well, maybe I can take this to the next level and really make this a career. And the idea to become a life coach came to me and I had no idea like what life coaching was. I had never gone to a life coach. I just thought, well, it's easier than being a therapist and going back to school <laughs> for that. I'm not going to get a PhD. So I started, I went to my, back to my cubicle and I started researching life coaching schools and I called a few of them on my lunch break and I just enrolled in one on the spot. It was like one of those wow. like moments where you're like, this is what I need to do. You know, I knew there was something there. So I became a coach and I started working with women more professionally and I was certified and I was learning the skills to really not just write a blog and share it, but actually begin to connect with people. And as I was kind of going through my own transformation, I was helping other women go through theirs. So I really loved that and I really loved the way that, you know, the vulnerability and the stories that I was, sh was sharing with women was doing something. It was like resonating with people. So the idea for Girl Code came, I wrote a few books before Girl Code, but Girl Code was really a book for women to help them kind of feel less alone. I think that in entrepreneurship specifically, I mean in corporate that's a whole different thing, but in entrepreneurship it can be really lonely. Like we were just talking about yeah. you're home sometimes working by yourself and we all look at social media and we look at other people's businesses and everything seems so pretty and so polished, but it's not really like that. So I wanted to kind of have a very realistic approach to business and I think business really starts in the mind. So Girl Code is really kind of that mental blueprint to get you in the right frame of mind for running, running a successful business and doing it by empowering those around you, connecting with those around you as opposed to competing and feeling really isolated. And I think that was one of the key themes that I really liked throughout your book. It's about empowering other women, isn't it? Because women, we can be a bit bitchy and we can be quite jealous and, and we see it in business all the time, but actually there is so much scope. There are so many opportunities out there. And I love that theme throughout the book that actually it's about community and it's about women coming together and supporting one another yes. and helping each other grow our own businesses. Yeah. And I think it's like the simplest thing. Like if you're standing in line to get a coffee and someone turns to you, like just before I was in the waiting room waiting for Lydia and, and some girl said, you know, I love your hair. And it made me feel so good. You know, yeah. and I love to give women compliments. And I think when we break the ice, just something as simple as a compliment, yeah. you realize that women are really craving that connection. We don't want to be catty and jealous and envious. That's hard. That's the hard yeah. route. A lot of people think that's the easy way and that's just how we are and how we're hardwired, but I don't believe that. I think that we do crave that connection. So that's really what I try to do with my work and in my own business and, and the way that I inspire other women. So today we're filming in, in Penguin on the Strand. Um, now, am I right in thinking, did you originally self-publish this and then Penguin took it up? Yep. That's so cool. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so I self-published. I had my first book, Sparkle, which came out years and years ago. It was 2012. 
Um, that was my first self-published book, and I really wanted to have a, a you know published book. That was sort of the dream. I had like mm -hmm. the Carrie Bradshaw Sex and the City dream, like I think a lot of girl writers do. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we all do. Who doesn't want that? And the first book was actually taken on by an agent, and it was rejected many, many times. And I didn't have enough of a following. I you know it was I was young, so when that happened, I was like, okay, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. I don't really want to let someone else define my career. So I just self-published and I took my audience that I had built with my blog, my little audience, and I sold a couple hundred books that month and then it started to grow and I did a few more. And then Girl Code for some reason just really took off. I don't know, it was just like divine timing with the way that my audience was, you know, was growing and I think the need for that message. Like it was like sort of this movement that's been brewing and I think Girl Code just kind of like set it off. So Penguin wound up picking it up, which was amazing. Um, and I'm just so excited to be able to bring this message, you know, further and further into more countries and, and just more communities because, you know, as a one woman show, it's really difficult sometimes. And to have a team behind me is just, it's so awesome. It's like a dream come true. What, um, what main differences are you finding at the moment? Because I mean, how, how long ago did anyone pick up the book? Is it from quite recent? Um, a couple months ago. Yeah. 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 So I published it in 2015 mm -hmm. um, and it was just picked up and it's being re-released now. So um, we redid, I redid the introduction and I have two new interviews in the book. So it's kind of like a refreshed version, mm -hmm. um, of it. And yeah. And, and how, you, you just mentioned the interviews. How did you choose the women that you featured? Because there was a real array of women. Yeah. I really wanted it to be women that I was personally inspired by. So they had to be women that I felt a connection with. So, you know, and I really wanted it to be representative of all different kind of, you know, paths, entrepreneurial paths. So I have women in there who are life coaches, business coaches, publicists, interior designers. Um, it just like runs the gamut of every type of business because I wanted whoever reads this book not just to feel like it's business coaches in there or life coaches. You know, I want anyone who has a dream or a passion to feel inspired. So the new version has one of my favorite women, Shirley Manson from Garbage. She's the front woman from Garbage. I really wanted her in the book. Um, she's just such a, I mean... Like, I found her, I think, when I was, like, 15 or 16, you know, when Garbage first kind of came on the scene, and I was like, who is this woman? She's such a <laughs> badass. Like, I have to, I have to like, just know her in some way. And I always had followed her career and went to her shows and loved the band. And then I noticed she started to kind of get more into women's empowerment, and she really became this mouthpiece for feminists and for women to really stand in their power. And I had no idea how to contact her. So I sent her a message on Instagram, and I said, I love your work. This is what I'm up to. This is my story with the book. And she said, I would love to be a part of it. So That's she's incredible. in there. Yeah, it like gives me chills to think about it. And it's just proof that when you ask for something, you have to ask for it if you want it, you know? Absolutely. And, and with social media, there's yeah. so many opportunities to do that. There's no excuse for us not to, really. It's only our own kind of fear holding us back yep. from asking. Yeah, my husband knows always like, well, what are they going to say no? He's like, you know, whenever he's like, you've inspired me to just ask for things yeah. because the worst thing is that she would say no or ignore it. And then, you know, you move on. Um, and then there's a publicist by the name of Gwen Wonderlick in there. She's a good friend of mine. Started as a client, and I started life coaching her, and we just became really, really good friends. So we sort of put our, our professional relationship aside and, and became more friends than anything. And I just loved her ethic, her work ethic, and you know the way she hustles in her business and really built her career. So she's featured in there too now. So it's, it's a little twist on the first version of the book, and I think it's just so much better, so much more powerful. Well, they're really good interviews. And I was reading this morning, I was having a coffee and having a refresh before we interviewed you. And I just loved this. And it was the um, interview with Alicia de Michel. Is that how yes, you pronounce her yes. name? And it was women empowering women is beautiful. You know, a woman is strong, beautiful and secure by the way she empowers and inspires others. And I thought that was really cool. And you had underlined it. So, so did you. Yeah. But such good interviews, really interesting ones. Yeah, she's amazing. And she's someone who really took her her story and her situation and really turned it around for herself. You know, she had had some troubles and, you know, in, in business and with her marriage. And she really said, you know, my past is not going to define me. And I think that's one of the themes in Girl Code that I love to get across. It's like, just because maybe you failed before or something didn't work, that doesn't mean, that's not who you are mm -hmm. right now. That doesn't define your path. You can turn it around at any time and you can have a new start. And, you know, every single day, every moment is a new start and a new opportunity. And I loved in her journey that, you know, she has three children as well yeah. and a single mum, you know, yes. and really making it happen, you know, no kind of excuses for how she's going out and making it happen every day. So I was really inspired by yep. her. 
Yeah. I think that's. I think definitely. I've, that's one of the things I found from the interviews. I think they really were like everyday women. You you, you managed to showcase women who, mm-hmm. you know, had not necessarily had everything handed to them on a plate, and they had very normal lives. A lot of them yeah. talk about their children and yeah. juggling everything. And yeah, and that's important to me because you know, in my career, I didn't have anything handed to me at all. You know, I really came from a single mom and. You know, my dad was out of the picture, and I was really told if you want anything, you've got to make it happen for yourself. So for me, it's I'm just so inspired by self-made women who just had a dream and figured it out along the way and hustled to make it happen for themselves. Yeah. Um, if you had to sum up the girl code in a few short, sharp messages, what, what would they be? Um, we're better together as women. I think that's one really strong theme. Um, to what you had mentioned, you know, about the empowerment, I think insecurity competes and confidence empowers. That's one of the themes in the book. So do whatever you need to do to make yourself more confident and to build your self-esteem because it just feels so much better to be able to empower someone. Um, and I think just really knowing that anything is possible. You know, if you would have told me, you know, six years ago when I had a dream of writing a book that I would be sitting in Penguin, you know, in London with with my a copy of my book that just got picked up by Penguin, I'd be like, are you crazy? Like, that's just, <laughs> you know, but it's it's just, it's a true testament to, like, the fact that, like, persistence and patience, I think, are really that, that formula that just works. If you just keep at it and you sort of know that your time will come and it's not going to be immediate, I think that's another thing that I tell women all the time. Like, you know, I have women come to me and say, well, I don't know why I don't have, you know, Instagram followers yet, or why am I not getting enough likes on my picture, or my blog's not getting enough hits. Like, it takes a long time. I've been doing this for nine years. So just keep at it and know that, like, this, the possibilities that you have, for, you you imagine your life going on one, 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 one way, but the possibilities are just beyond your greatest dreams. You know, it's just, it's amazing what can happen. Amazing. Thank you so much. What a fantastic interview. Thank you. I'm feeling really inspired. And I'm going to read your book again. So um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me.